Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about The Blacklist, Season 10, Episode 11. Great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, when we had that opening, I wasn't I wasn't really sure where the episode was going to happen, uh, where it was going to go, until we see Reddington's in the back. I was like, of course, Redwood had the unfortunate... Uh, fortunate um, it unfortunately get caught up in a robbery. So that's amazing. Obviously, the uh, the guy was live streaming at the time, so it went super viral. News networks picked it up. And obviously, Dembe noticed read into footage, and it's like, cool, so we got to get down to Philadelphia. Well, why was he in Philadelphia? Who knows? Red's, Red's been doing his own thing lately. He's not, like, pinned down to one location. He's been, like, all over the place. We knew at least one of those things. It's like, okay, well, we know he's a little mobile. I thought... I thought it had something to do with the project he was making. It's like, no, that was the whole, like, fake um, post office Wu Jing situation. So it's like, what else, what other plates does Reddington currently have spinning? I mean, once again, he has gotten a lot of more of his security back around him now, but he's still very, like, elusive, kind of doing his own thing. Like, I think no one except for Red fully knows what he's up to, so... Either way, getting caught up in this robbery situation, and I, I love how this has to like be broken down. Where it's like, okay, wrestler and Dembe are there immediately. Like, all right, we gotta, oh, we gotta figure this out. We gotta make because sh- like, right, there's too much media attention here. The last thing we want is Red to be caught on like fully, fully caught on camera. So it is a situation of well, now we have to worry about that. I mean, he already had to deal with that situation where like a. Uh, the photographer that took a photo of him like six years ago or something like that. That whole storyline that came up with the Wu Jing of it all. That photographer. Like, it, Red already kind of had to deal with that. So now it's like, okay, I'm unfortunately in this situation. It wouldn't have spiraled out the way it did if the guy who was in there, uh, what was his name, Sammy, wasn't like live streaming at the time. So that that's what really complicated things. Um so it's like, all right, so we're going to handle this. We're going to take over the operation. Like It's just the locals dealing with this right now. So we're going to bring in our own tact team, bring in our own negotiator. We're going to try and get Red out, and hopefully this will all be mediated. Everything will be fine. Oh, problem is SWAT shows up, which the head guy, was it McGinley or something like that? I'm like, don't I recognize that? I was like, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the actor who played. I want to say the character's name is Brett. He's a cop in the... Former former Netflix Marvel stuff, so like Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Punisher, Defenders. Um, I don't think he was in Defenders, but he bounced between multiple shows. I want to say he might have been in a little bit of... He might not have even been in Iron Fist, but he was definitely like introduced in Daredevil. He had a recurring role in Daredevil. I want to say he might have popped up. Uh, he popped up maybe at least once or twice in Jessica Jones, and he might have been in Luke Cage as well. I don't remember. But I want to say the cop's name is Brett. He worked his way up and eventually became a detective. I think it's the same dude, which wrestler kind of has to be a hard ass when it comes to and be like, hey, hey, the FBI's taking over this. It's like, okay, but the moment shooting gets started, we're going to storm in there because, like, you know, it's like, it's hard to say, like, right, he's quick to want to just kind of go in there. It's like, yeah, I, I feel like, th- yes, they have their reasons for, like, yo, we want to slow this roll. But I also do think it is kind of a thing of, hey, you're going at this a little fast SWAT dude wanting to kind of go in there, could get other people killed. Like, yes, they have their own reasons for, like, wanting to slow the roll, but it feels like he was a little too gun ho But maybe that's just me. I mean, I guess maybe in his situation, like, hey, I'm... I'm trained to, like, immediately go in there and take out the assailant so we can, like, uh, save as many people as possible. Because they do know that Red might be in there because the uh, woman who had left just beforehand, she's aware of the, what gun, she noticed the revolver he had. And it's like, well, you sure it was a revolver? She's like, yeah, my dad always talked about preferring six shots to 15 maybe. Six, like, sure things versus, like, 15 maybes, you know? So I was like, oh, that was interesting. So she uh, kind of labeled, like, okay, there was, like, five, maybe four or five people in there that she was aware of. Obviously, the gunshot went off, like I said. SWAT wanted to go in there. Wrestler and Dembe eventually go in there, and the the guy, the the robber, is dead in your life. Okay. And then the guy is like, oh, Red's not here. But it's like, no, no, no. It was definitely Reddington on that footage. And the guy who's there wearing the hat and everything looks nothing like Red. And I love like this almost like clue situation of almost like, oh, what really happened? As like they're telling the stories about what happened. Um there was some truth in it. I did think it was interesting, and I was wondering whether there was going to be significance to it, but 
the guy knew like, hey, there's a safe here. He already cut like the power to like the camera footage. So I guess like has scoped out the place enough to know something like that. But that's why I was like, oh, that seemed weird. Not less that was like Red's decision to do that, but we it never came up. So it seemed like it might've just been this guy. Cause later on it's like, oh, was this guy something significant? It's like, no, he just seemed like, it's actually kind of jacked up. It's kind of sad because it's like, oh yeah, he was a nobody. It's like, well, he was a somebody to somebody, you know? So it is kind of sad, but it's like in the grand scheme of like, yeah, he wasn't anyone special. It's not like this happened to be some blacklister that Reddington stumbled across. Obviously, this is one of those episodes where there is no blacklister, but everyone told their series of events about what happened. And it's just like wrestler and Demi. It's like, yeah, don't make any sense. The evidence says that Reddington was here. The gun that's on the culprit isn't what the woman said earlier. She's like, it was definitely a revolver. The gun that's in the uh, gunman's hand is the one that Reddington uses. Uh, the guy uh, that's wearing like the fedora, he's wearing a hat that's exactly him wearing the hat and jacket that Reddington would wear. It's like, okay, something's not right here. Because we also know Red was also wearing his shades at the time, wasn't he? If I remember correctly in the footage. So it's like, yeah, kind of a misstep on that front. So... So I was like, yeah, the group is lying for some reason, and we're just not sure why. And so we do find out the truth, like, because they made it seem like, hey, the streamer guy, uh, he was the one that ended up um, shooting uh, him and the uh, assailant, like, struggled over the gun, fired the shot. But when it was all said and done, uh, it was actually Reddington that shot him. Because once again, Red may be a criminal, but he is a criminal with a heart of gold, which is also weird to say, considering, like, how ruthless he can be sometimes. But yes. It, it's come up time and time again that, yes, he has his own moral code. So it's like, hey, like him, like hitting, uh, he probably would have just kind of let things go if he hadn't probably hit uh, G-Men, uh, the, the woman working the register. If he hadn't hit her, that's, well, yeah, because then he also hit uh, Sammy. It's like, yeah, this guy's a little unstable. I need to put you down because you're kind of like a rabid animal right now and I, I you could end up hurting someone. So it's like, right, you're this criminal, you and everything, so... They said, like, oh, my God, he threatened us. But even Dembe's like, I don't know. That wouldn't be in Red's nature to do, like, threaten regular civilians like that. I mean, he will to get what he wants sometimes. But it's also like, yeah, he was backed into a corner this time. It's like, well, he got out the back. It's like, well, how'd you do that? Well, we know that um, the SWAT immediately came in, like, well, didn't they come in from the back? Or I think they did. So it's like, yeah, how did they not see him? And the moment that was kind of said and they kind of focused on the ground, I was like, because he never left. The no, it wasn't until later when the manager showed up and was asking the cops and they're like, oh, you're going to have to clean this place up first. Like someone's going to have to come in and clean up the crime scene before you can open. But And they focused on the ground. I was like, right, that's where Red was. He was in the building the entire time. He never, The easiest way to get out is to literally um, hide there the entire time and wait for the whole situation to play out won't be the first time he's been in that situation where he had to kind of lay low for like hours on end and wait for the situation to kind of fully die down so he he's got the patience you know uh for i mean he's just a patient person in general but also like he's been through this time and time again so it's like right it's just just another uh patiently waiting in a hiding space uh type of situation my thoughts were, like, the entire episode, I'm like, what, right, could it be, like, someone there is actually so insignificant that he was there to meet or something? That's what I was like, like, it's one of the four people there, like, something, but it's like, no, they weren't, they're all regular people. It just happened, it just, Reddington was super unlucky, and so it's like, cool, they end up meeting up at a bar later, I'm like, okay, something's fishy, because the moment we saw, like, the um, man, uh, the uh, person behind the register, a uh, uh, G-man behind the uh, at the bar. I was like, oh, like, is she have some connection to Reddington? It's like, no, they all show up there because they're going to get paid by Reddington. Because he's like, well, this is unfortunate. He said, I could threaten all of you, but I'm not going to do that. How about I make you like give you all a whole bunch of money? And they're like, how much money? He's like, make you rich, filthy rich, like you've never had to work another day in your life, type of rich. So they all were gun ho about it. They let I love like Reddington just goes over, ah, wipes off the gun handle, uh, puts it in Sammy's and like like rubs it against Sammy's hands, then puts it in the assailant's hands. Like, all right, cool. Now, oh, sir, here, uh, take this fedora. Can I get your Phillies hat? Because he's the one that was actually wearing the Phillies hat. And it's like gave Red gave him his jacket. It's like okay. 
And I love he's like, oh boy, and just kind of like tugged it down a little bit more because he knew it wasn't going to fold them for long, but he needed to give himself at least enough time. And luckily, everyone in that store played their part to a T, uh, sent them down the wrong way. Saying like, oh, he was at a bus station and they ended up finding a guy that was legitimately wearing a Phillies hat. I was like, oh, did Red get on a bus and give that guy his clothes too? But it's like, no, he never got on a bus because he never left the building, so... I just love how that ended up playing out like that. I love a misdirect type of episode of like, well, this is what happened. It's like, no, that's not really what happened. This is what happened. No, actually, this is what happened. So I, I really like that. And uh, ultimately, he did pay everyone off. And it's like, right, those are four, I guess, a un un somewhat unlucky day for Reddington ended up being their luckiest day ever. So they got paid. I love that they were like, oh, man, maybe he's not going to show up. But G-Man was like, no, he's an honorable guy. He also saved our lives. So she had a lot more... It is interesting that fate that Reddington can put, like, instill in people when it comes to him. It's like, because he is such a charming criminal, you're like, you can't, yes, he's a murderer. He's murdered so many people. And that's only what we know over the course of the series. He has been running his criminal empire for over 30 years, so. Because he was already, like, on the most wanted list for, like, 30 years. But then you also add, like, the... 10 plus years of this show because it's been like what 12 years maybe in totality um so it's been like what 42 years of doing his thing as a criminal you know 12 of which was with the fbi but still uh it is that situation of because i was about to say because it's like yeah because it's 12 years because there's a two-year time skip between eight and nine seasons eight and nine uh either way putting all that aside so while um, Wrestler and Dembe are chasing their tails, essentially, uh, Harold's got to deal with the whole Panda Baker of it all because he has to basically explain to Cynthia what happened because he's been dodging her like crazy. And I love that she's breaking down everything that happened. She's like, yeah, I was super excited to find out what happened, uh, uh, Harold, but uh, you super went quiet on me. So what happened is like, yeah, Wu Jing and uh, his guy, Zheng Wei, are, were both killed here in the post office. And it's like, yeah, we were uh, running an investigation to find out what happened. And she's immediately like, because the fake building wasn't for Wu Jing, it was for you. You got played. Rain to ended up killing. It's like, well, how did Wu Jing get the real address? Uh, we don't know. It's like immediately uh, pulling away from Bo Chang, uh, Bo Chang, the uh, troll farmer. Because last thing you want is like, okay, once again, we don't know where he is in the aftermath of that. Whether he's still in Reddington's employ or is he just kind of, yes, in his employ, but just out there in the world doing his own thing or whatever. But it's like, yeah, kind of skirting around those details because uh, that's been the thing for... Cooper trying to figure that all out, like how he's going to explain that to Cynthia. And it's just been one thing after another, especially, I mean, it, it's already always been a thing with Reddington kind of going his own way, but it is, it's getting to that point now where it's like, man, the good you do, yeah, it is outweighed the bad you've done, but it's, it's starting to hard, it's been harder and harder to justify keeping you around. So, and I think even Reddington recognizes that as well. So it is a situation of, well, what do we do? about this and Cynthia's like right put Reddington in front of me by noon or I'm going to the um I'm going to the attorney general I don't even know if, I don't think they explained to Cynthia about the whole him being uh in this particular predicament in this episode I don't think they explained that to her uh but either way um so Harold's having to deal with that uh, there's also the Sia of it all. She's going through the files because they're trying to find out the maximum damage of what Reddington did, which really quickly, yes, he basically erased all the files, like any mentions of his name or any information he provided, and also his immunity agreement, which immediately Dembe's like, that doesn't make any sense because now there's nothing protecting him from main justice ever coming after him. Like his immunity agreement, once again, I think he deleted the files from off the system, but also like kept them. But I'm like, well, that do you any good if they're not on the because the reason why he did all that was once again so nothing like Wu Jin could ever happen again whereas like Wu Jin could get cl got close to like exposing you and your connection to the task force and FBI then like he does open himself up to that but I'm also wondering does did Reddington also do that because he's also not only freeing himself of any future complications but he also is freeing the task force of any 
liability they may face because of their connection. And because if there's no official connection on file, you would think the government would sweep that under the rug. Granted, it would still blow back on the task force. Hell, even Cynthia's like, I know this is going to blow back on me and it's going to cost me my career. So I'm trying to save my career. I'm trying to save everyone at this task force career, but that's not going to be easy. So, but anyway, circling back while she is looking through all that, she wanted to look into her mom's files, but that clearance was above her own. She still looked into it regardless. She ended up finding out about her mom's death. And I was like, is that really how that happened? I was like, is that what happened? Did her throat get sick? I was like, I thought she got shot. But once again, it's been years. It's been over a decade since I've, or if not pushing a decade. Because I don't, because I didn't, the first season start like, I don't remember when the first season started. I think it was in January of 2013, like at the top of the year, wasn't it? I want to say it started in January. So it definitely had, it might be over a year, a uh, decade. If it, if it if it started uh, exactly in like January 2013, I feel like it did, but I don't remember. I'm about to say like I know a lot of the seasons start in October, but I want to say the series started. But once again, I've not seen it since 2013 slash 2014, uh, whenever the se the first season originally aired. Uh, funny enough, I think season two is the only season I never fully saw aired. I think. I fell behind on season two and then I caught up either before season three started or like at the early days of season three because I didn't start doing reviews until like 2016. So it was like in the middle of season three when I started doing reviews. So I, I can't even go on, rely on that to kind of go back to kind of figure it out. But either way, tangents and all that aside. Um, so it's been so long. I don't remember. Like I remember Mira's death, but I don't remember like a lot of the details. It's like, oh, she got her throat slit in a club. I'm like, she did? I don't remember the circumstances. I legitimately don't remember the circumstances. Cause it wasn't even near the was it wasn't even near the end of the season, was it? It was like she died partway through the season, I think. Cause it's also like that associate of Reddington's from season one too. Like who was um I don't remember her name. She was like his his accountant. Um and after she died, like I think the next season is when we got introduced to Mr. Kaplan. I think. If I remember correctly. She I mean obviously Kate played a bigger role than that but she was kind of oh i was kind of i was under the impression when we were first introduced to her she was kind of replacing that character either way it's just kind of in that same boat of like man that was so long ago i don't remember so i i didn't rem like them bringing up the i was like wasn't it i thought i was like in my head i was like didn't she die when berlin attacked the um task force like when that associate of reddington's is like uh his um well, it wasn't even Berlin. Wasn't that the guy working for Berlin? God, one didn't Tom work for Berlin too? No, he worked originally from Reddington, and then didn't he start working for Berlin? Oh, uh, who was played by? I can't believe I remember all this now. It's like, oh yeah, he played by Peter Stormer. Um, God, I, I I'm blanking on that so much. The re my point is, I'm going on this huge tangent. But I'm like, I'm trying to remember like the whole mirror of it all. I legitimately don't remember that. Like how, like the circumstances, like I could have sworn it was like during like a task force being attacked situation, she ended up dying, but they were like, oh, it was in a club. And I guess after a suspect, and whatever the case may be, uh, Red, um, Harold does talk to her later on about like, right. And what you thought you could find some answers to it, you know, like you, you, you spend all this time joining the world of intelligence, hoping that the knowledge will help you in some shape or form, but there is no there's no reason behind the crime. There's no, like, answers that will ever satisfy you. So, but it's like, at the end of the day, you have to know your mom saved people's lives and she was a good agent. But the problem is that along with looking into this file, trying to find out so much about her mom, she, and finding out about her mom's death because it was like a hole in her life that she needed to, she needed to fill, she needed that knowledge, that she ended up stumbling across the fact is that she's adopted, which she was like, but if that's the case, my mom's always been straightforward with me why would she not be straightforward about this? And that's what I thought was interesting. I guess like for any parent, I mean, she was fairly young at the time. She was still like a teenager because she's only like in her, her character is like in her twenties, if not maybe her early thirties, because it has been like over a decade. So she was like, I think she was like, I think when she brought it up at the beginning of the season, she was like 15 or whatever when her mom died, I think. So yeah, put her in like her late twenties, you know? Uh, so I don't know. Why wouldn't her mom tell her that? Maybe it's just kind of like too hard of a situation, but it's like, yeah, her mom kept that from her. And I even love, like, she got, um, because 
Herbie wanted to help with the situation, so it's like, hey, I can run the DNA for you, and he did, but he also made sure not to look at the results. It's like, I, I printed it out, I put it in his envelope, and I didn't look, because I, for one, I didn't want to invade your privacy. Also, it could have been a whole HR uh, nightmare, so yeah. Um, but you don't have to open this. I could shred this into a million pieces, and you can keep your worldview, because it's like, right, you had a good childhood, right? So why destroy that with something that doesn't, like, won't, that shouldn't change any of that? Like, it could change that, but why Why fix something that's not broken? And she's like, yeah, but what if you found out you were adopted? He was like, oh, that'd be great. He's like, that'd be an interesting call with mom and dad. He's like, in fact, I might do that already, you know? Um, but Sia, for her, it's like, regardless of it all, even if it changes my worldview, I need to know the truth. And she finds out she was adopted, like, the question is, why did her mom hide that from her? So she also didn't bring it up to Harold about what she discovered. So that definitely is going to be something Sia is going to be going through uh, uh, for a while. I'm, I'm curious to see where that ultimately ends up going. Um, we had Reddington's meeting with Panda Baker because, of course, he had to do the creepy thing of sitting inside of her house in the dark. He's like, you don't even have to do that, Red. But I guess it's like, right, if, if she, the lights are on, she's going to be suspicious and she might. But it's like, yeah, it's, it's still like creepy to just be waiting in the dark. But it's like, right, you wanted our meeting. I was tied up. I got Harold's voicemail. So what did you? It's like, OK, it's too late. I'm going to Maine Justice. You, I'm going to talk to the Attorney General. You want to blackmail me with, with what you like, what you did for me? Then okay, I do whatever you want to. I don't care. But he's like, at the end of the day, Red's like, no, that's not. I want you to protect the task force, not because I'm threatening you. I want you to do it because they do good work. So it's here. He's like, right, here's my two cents. Do whatever you want to with it. Have your meeting the next day. And Cynthia's just kind of shocked by like, wait, because like I said, I think Reddington's getting prepared for the end game because he knows he won't be in the picture forever. And I think he's making excuses why he's removing himself from the task force so that once the time comes, he can disappear, die or whatever. You know, once again, the plan was always to die and let Liz take over things. Um, I don't know if we've caught up with his medical condition or not. I, they haven't, that hasn't really been brought up this season. So I don't, I don't know if that's playing a role in all of this, but for, well, it's also been, I just thought about that too. I was like, oh yeah, it was a year in between 10 and 9 and 10, wasn't it? Seasons 9 and 10. I think it was like a year. So it's actually been like 13 years at this point, right? Uh, either way. Well, because the task force did go dark for that year, so it technically doesn't count. And the task force kind of went dark for that two-year period too, so that kind of doesn't count either. But regardless, it's been 13 years or so like in the in the timeline of this, uni of the, of this series in, in universe. But either way, we do see that Cynthia does, like, cancel her meeting with the Attorney General, so she's going to keep this hush-hush, or at the very least, figure out how to navigate this. That's definitely going to be interesting to see. And we also had uh, Cooper coming back, and apparently Reddington had dropped off a book for Agnes. It's, a, a, a like, some catalog book he picked up in Philadelphia. That's why he went to Philadelphia, because she went there on, like, a trip or whatever, but he wanted her to kind of, like, get to see like the art and stuff and he got her specifically this book and that's why he was there in the first place which is like of course he went out of he continues to always go out of his way for Agnes you know which is really sweet and it just once again always it always plays that interesting element of just Reddington and his motivations is always so interesting always so suspicious and yet sometimes there's always like a good meaning to the at the heart of it. it's always fascinating so it's definitely going to be interesting to see ultimately where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode but really that's all i wanted to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye